So you guys recently switched to keyboard and mouse and want to know what is the best keyboard, what is the best mouse, what are the best keybinds, what's the best sensitivity, should you go low or high sense? I will be answering all those questions and I guarantee you that I will give you guys some answers that you have not heard anywhere else. I will give you guys some practice routines, some things you can work on to make sure you're improving as a player. In many cases, people are doing everything right, putting in the time and the effort, but there are some things that they're missing which can be easily fixed. These are things that nobody ever talks about that so many people are missing. This is not only at the beginner level, this stretches to advanced pro players and there are just so many things to talk about. So let's get right into it so you can find out how you can become as good as possible on keyboard and mouse. I am about to tell you the best piece of advice that you will probably ever get when it comes to keyboard and mouse. I guarantee that it will answer almost all of your questions you had on keyboard and mouse. Preference. There is no such thing as the best keybind, sensitivity, keyboard, mouse, switches. All it is, is preference. I'm gonna give you some of the better keybinds and the better keyboards, but at the end of the day, it comes down to preference. If something works for you but not for your friend, that is completely fine. The most common mistake I see is that people who switch to keyboard and mouse always want to chase every other pro's keybinds. For some reason, people like to change everything when they're plateauing in skill a little bit. So before I start talking about the keybinds or the keyboard, I'm going to talk about the most optimal keybinds and what's best to start with so later down the road you don't end up changing everything. Just remember that you have heaps of pros like Mitro and Stretch who use function keys. These are some of the best players in the world who probably use the least optimal keybinds and I will be talking about muscle memory versus optimization and why it's important so you don't go changing everything. So let me talk to you about what are some of the best things you can be doing, what are the best keybinds, keyboard mice, but I will talk about it with what might work for you and not what is working for me because that is supposedly better. So there are keyboards that are better in terms of quality than others and a higher price will usually get you a better keyboard, but at the end of the day, it comes down to preference. Now talking about keyboard size, you have the full size keyboard, the TKL which is 80% and lastly you have the 60% keyboard. So all these different keyboard sizes are preference, but for a couple reasons. The first and main, main reason is how much room you want to have on your desk. If you have a lower sense, then typically you would want to have a 60% keyboard so you have more space for your mouse on your desk. However, if you still want to do a little bit of editing, you might want the error keys, but you also want a relatively small keyboard. Then you should probably get the TKL, which is 80% of a full size keyboard. Whatever the reason is, it does not really matter and what will make the biggest difference are the switches. I'm sure most of you guys know what switches are, but for those of you that don't, they are the actual mechanic inside the keyboard that will register your click when you press a specific key in. You have different kinds of switches which work completely different from one another. Again, these come down to preference like you may have already guessed, so I will tell you the difference between each key so you can decide which one you like best. The best way to find which switch you like is to go to a store like Best Buy and try pressing all the different keys so you know what they feel like. Now let me talk to you guys about the main differences between all the different switches. In this image, you can see you have linear, tactile, and clicky switches. So for a linear switch, they're usually smooth, consistent, and are pretty quiet. So this means that when you press down on the switch, it is the same press all the way through and you don't feel a bump. So you just press it and it goes all the way through and then releases. Now moving on to tactile, it is bumpy and moderately quiet. Don't pay attention to the beginner friendly. When it says bumpy, what it means is that when you press the key, you will feel a bump letting you know that the key registered. This gives people a lot more responsiveness since it lets you know when the press actually registers. Lastly, we have clicky and it says it is bumpy and loud. Okay, so for linear, you can press it really fast, it goes in fast and then comes out fast without any bump or sensation feeling when the key registers. The only downside to this is that you can fat finger pretty easily. Let's say you try to press D but your finger sometimes presses F or goes in between the keys. Then maybe you would want to get a tactile or clicky switch. Like stated before with a tactile switch, unless you press the key down hard enough, it will not register the press. With the clicky switch, you have to press them a lot harder for them to go in, which causes it to be very loud. So if you stream or make YouTube videos, it probably would not be the keyboard for you since it is very loud. I used to use my Razer Huntsman Mini which had purple clicky switches but they were so loud so I had to switch to my red linear switches on my RK61. There are pros who are super successful on all kinds of switches so don't worry if you find silver switches feel the best for you even though they are not the most popular among Fortnite players. Again there is no better switch, it all comes down to preference. Now moving on to some keyboard recommendations. I'm going to be making my recommendations based off of experience from using them, so I will not make up any BS and I will be 100% truthful. 
Let's start it off with my main keyboard, the RK61. I have red linear switches on it, and this keyboard is fairly cheap, coming in at around $50. For the price you pay, it has really good build quality, and I have never had any problems with it whatsoever. Not to mention, it has some pretty cool features such as Bluetooth. I absolutely love this thing, and this is by far my favorite keyboard I have ever used. Moving on, we have the Razer Huntsman Mini. I have some purple clicky switches, so this keyboard does get pretty loud sometimes. That is the only thing I don't like about it, since it gets in the way of my voice sometimes when I stream or record videos. It has a price tag of about $100, however, you can get it with red linear switches, which are my preference, but may not be yours. This is a phenomenal keyboard, and I'm sure that if I had red linear switches with it, I would probably like it more than my RK61. The last keyboard I want to recommend to you guys is the Ann Pro 2. Now, I have this in red linear switches, and the keyboard is about $100. I really like the keyboard and find it very similar to the RK61, however, I just prefer the overall feel of the RK61, and it seems to be a little quieter. Now this is the point I want to bring up. I like the RK61 better than both the Ann Pro 2 and Razer Huntsman Mini, yet the RK61 is half the price. So don't always think you have to spend a lot of money to get a good keyboard. Spending $250 on the SteelSeries Pro TKL just so you can change the actuation point does not really make too much sense. However, you don't want to go too cheap and get a $20 keyboard at a supermarket or something because even though it says mechanical keyboard switches, it could be really bad and have a terrible build quality. Just make sure you check the reviews and make sure you're not really buying junk. It might be worth it to spend a little more than $20 on a keyboard if you can afford it. Before we get into the keybinds and sensi- Before we get into the keybinds and sensitivity, let's talk about mice. When looking for a mouse, you want to make sure you pay attention to weight, but also to the grip of the mouse. You don't want to get the lightest mouse ever if it's not comfortable for you to hold. In my case, I have smaller hands, so I went with a Model D-. It is also a super lightweight mouse, coming in at around 61 grams. So if you find a mouse that feels comfortable for you, don't worry too much about the weight. You have pro players who are phenomenal on 40 gram mice and also super heavy ones like 130. Since I'm talking about weight so much, let's talk about the trade-offs. So if you get a lighter weight mouse, your building and editing will usually be a little bit better as you can flick a lot faster. However, your aim might struggle a little bit and it might be pretty inconsistent. So if you go with a heavier mouse, your aim will definitely be a little bit better. When looking at a mouse, be sure you check the mouse buttons and scroll wheel, because those are some things that people usually skip over when looking at a mouse. However, you use them a lot, especially when playing a game like Fortnite. Now let's talk about keybinds, which is probably the most interesting thing when switching to keyboard and mouse. Guess what? It's preference. Just comment preference down below since I say it so much. Maybe we can get a counter of how many times I've said it. So many people just copy their favorite pro player's keybinds and continue changing them, which is why they struggle so much. Remember, with keybinds, it comes down to muscle memory versus optimization. So if you took a pro player with thousands of hours in the game and gave them the most optimal keybinds, and they had all that time on those keybinds, sure, they might be a little bit better. However, however, if you just switch all their keybinds to optimized keybinds, and they don't have all those thousands of hours on them, they will probably perform a little worse even one month down the line. This is why muscle memory comes out on top. You have pro players like Avery and Mitro who play on function keys, like F1, F2, F3, and F4. Those are probably the least optimized keybinds, yet they're some of the best players in the world. Unless your keybinds are absolutely horrendous, it is probably worth sticking with them, especially if you have a good amount of muscle memory with them. So if you're lucky enough and you're just starting out on keyboard and mouse, do yourself a favor and start off with optimized keybinds. The most important thing is to make sure your fingers are on WASD as much as possible. So try and put two builds like your wall and stair on your two side mouse buttons. For your third build, try and get it close to your thumb, so something like a C or a V. I would probably recommend having your floor on those keys. Many people, many people have their edit on E or F since it is super close to WASD. The very last thing I would like to talk about is sensitivity. You guys probably already know what I'm about to say, but guess what? It's preference. Both low and high sensitivity have their advantages. Usually with a low sense, your aim will be a little bit better since you have your whole arm to track and not just your wrist. Most people say that with a lower sense, your editing and building will be a little slower. So with a higher sensitivity, your editing and building will probably be a little bit better. Personally, I prefer a higher sensitivity and I'm on 800 DPI with a 14.3% X and Y. 
However, just go with whatever sensitivity feels best for you. You have pro players on both low and high sensitivity. Some things I would recommend is that if you're on 400 DPI, try and stick below 30% X and Y. If you're on 800 DPI, try and go below 15% X and Y. Lastly, if you're on 1600 DPI, try and go below 7.5% X and Y. Hopefully you're not more confused than you were at the beginning, and I hope you have a better understanding with everything. I know things like this can get very complicated. That's why I made a 10 minute plus long video not only trying to explain everything, but also to try and give you guys some recommendations. For any reason you still need more help, you can message me on Twitter and I will respond to your guys' messages. This video took so long to make, so if you guys could take less than 2 seconds to drop a like and even subscribe, that would be greatly appreciated. If you guys want to support me even further, please be sure to use code VERMAX in the item shop, as we currently only need 35 new supporters until we hit 200 for the month. With all that being said, it's been your boy VERMAX, stay safe and take care.